Good morning and welcome to Together in God, a media ministry of Grace Lutheran Church of the ELCA at 202 West Grand Avenue in Eau Claire. We are excited to share with you today God's message of love and hope for all. Please join us now in worship. Good morning. morning. Uh, Welcome on this Sunday as we remember the baptism of Jesus and as as we gather to hear God's word. If you were here last Sunday, you remember I was panicking because they canceled my flight to Florida uh, about 20 minutes before the service. I was able to get there uh, on uh, Monday afternoon, and so I was able to teach. I taught eight hours a day for uh, five days a, a seminary class in Florida and so it was lovely to be back in the classroom and uh, but because of being in Florida and traveling and all the fun of Omicron I'm kind of keeping a little bit of distance just to make sure uh, that you all are safe I hope you understand uh, that let us um, rise and we're going to begin with a blessing Uh, in in celebration of thanksgiving. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock that gave us birth, our light, and our salvation. Amen. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word, you claim us as sons and daughters, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life, but above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our opening hymn is number 453 in the Red Hymnal.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, you anointed Jesus at his baptism with the Holy Spirit and revealed him as your beloved Son. Keep all who are born of water and the Spirit faithful in your service, that we may rejoice to be called children of God through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Good morning. Can you hear me all right? Okay, good. Thank you. Uh, it makes me sad to be standing here to talk about what I need to talk about, but in light of the current events and <clears throat> recent events with uh, COVID-19, the, uh, the Wisconsin Council of Churches have highly recommend that churches uh, discontinue meeting in person temporarily. And because of that, uh, the council will be meeting this Tuesday to discuss that. And in addition to that, uh, normally we would be beginning to announce the uh, annual meeting, which by our constitution is the first Sunday in February. 
So on Tuesday, the council will be talking about both of those issues. And after that and a decision has been made, then announcements will be sent out in the normal way. I would invite you, if you have feelings one way or the other about the in-person meeting <coughs> or in, in services, uh, please feel free to contact any of the council members and share what your thoughts are on that. Uh, I really feel that our church has done a very good job of following the guidelines and those type of things to be courteous to other people, conscientious uh, of other people and keeping safe. So uh, with that, I ask your prayers as we consider those decisions and thank you for what you've done <clears throat> to this point to keep everyone safe. So thank you. The first reading is from Isaiah. But now thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, I shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in exchange for you. Because you are precious in my sight and honored, and I love you. I give people in return for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east, and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from far away and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God.
second reading is from Acts. Now when the apostles of Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. The two went down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet the Spirit had not come upon any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit.
The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the third chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. As the people were filled with expectation, and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them, saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I'm not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear the threshing hole floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus had been baptized and was praying, the heavens heaven, the heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him bodily in the form of a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am so pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. I'd like to move through this passage on baptism we just heard in kind of three movements. First one is to note that John, uh, Luke, the writer of this story, tells the story a little differently than Matthew and Mark do, who also tell a similar story, and very differently than uh, John does in his gospel. What I notice, uh, first off, is he starts kind of from an above view. The other Gospels begin with John the Baptist and zero in on him and then expand out to the crowds. But Luke begins with a crowd that is waiting. Waiting for something. Waiting for God to be on the move. They're waiting and wondering about God's presence and it drawing near to them. We usually wait for someone, or at least often do, who has something we need that we don't. I found myself at the hotel waiting for an Uber driver to get me to the airport because I didn't have a car. He had something I needed that I didn't have. The people are waiting for God, hoping that he'll bring them something that they don't have. Their waiting, it seems to me, is stimulated by two things, at least. First of all, all the particular tensions and challenges of the time in which they lived. And they were many. They were many for, for the people of Israel as a community. And each individual also carried their own particular challenges tests, struggles. And so they wait. They wait for relief. And I think that waiting, secondly, is intensified because God has sent prophets for generation after a generation making grand promises to the people that God's great transformation would come. And so they wait expectantly, hoping that now might be the time of that great transformation. Right? So there's the, the hunger they have as human beings, and that that hunger is, is further stimulated by the promises that God makes. Next, I notice that the crowd is wondering, wondering where God is in the midst of what they're observing. They stood in the presence of John, whose life was so intensely uh, consumed by his desire to serve God that they're drawn to him and his message. They're wondering if God is bringing God's great transformation, will John be the one who brings it about? But as they look to John and as they listen to John, John points them beyond himself. He assures them that indeed God is in the move. Great things are coming. 
but he is not the one who will bring them. He's simply preparing the way for another who is greater than himself. He plays his role by pointing toward Jesus. I think we talked about this a month ago when we read uh, this particular passage one previous time. And so the wondering crowd is, inter- that wondering interacts with their waiting, making them hopeful. And then, finally, I want to speak of the wonderful gift that comes. Jesus shows up. He comes and he stands among the crowd of people. He's baptized in a way that, at least as, as Luke presents it, is indistinguishable from the others who were baptized in the moment of the baptism itself. But as he comes out of the waters and as he enters into a time of prayer, of, of communication with his God, Remarkable things happen to him. His world is expanded. Maybe he gets a glimpse of his home uh, that he misses as the heavens are parted. A sign of God's presence and a dove comes to him. And most importantly of all, he hears God speak to him. You are my child, my beloved. With you I am so pleased. This is the gift God offers Jesus right here as he's uh, teetering on the edge of the ministry he's begin. He's about to begin. His life, as all of our lives, will be filled with ups and downs and some days when it seems like the bottom has dropped out of everything. When things we thought were resolved need to be revisited yet one more time. But the one who called Jesus beloved stayed with him. And here's the thing about Jesus. When he has a gift, he has to share it. Something about Jesus, he has to share the gift. And so he takes the title which God has given him and gives it freely to us. You are my son. You are my daughter. You are children of God, beloved of God. So when our lives are filled with ups and downs and when the bottom falls out of everything, or we revisit things we thought had already been figured out. We can trust that we too are held by God, the one who has also named and claimed us. Immediately after this story, uh, Jesus goes out into the wilderness and he faces the devil. He faces the tempter. And the name and claim of God upon him gives him strength to resist the temptation that comes his way. I think it's probably even stronger than that because the tempter knows that God's naming and claiming of him is his uh, chief power, his chief support. And so the tempter begins there. In, In two of the three temptations, he begins, if you're the son of God. Prove it. If. He's looking at Jesus as if you could be one whom God claims. But Jesus responds each time with, God, with God's word, remembering all the time that God has told him he is God's beloved. This is not an invention of his own. This knowledge that he is love sustains Jesus through all the challenges, and they are many that he faces. God's naming holds Jesus in faith through his own family's opposition, through rejection in his hometown. They want to throw him off a cliff. God's naming and claiming of Jesus sustains him when the religious leaders around him are upset and attacking him, when it seems everybody is ready to attack him. Jesus clings to God's word in times of hunger and even in times of self-doubt. He goes to the cross and suffers at the hand of a world that treats him like a parentless child, but he faces it all courageously because he knows himself deeply loved 
by the deepest reality, the highest power of the cosmos. And he taps into this reality regularly through prayer, through speaking to God, but also silence. And this privilege which he has, he also shares with us as he does with, as he shares all his gifts. So that we can enter into silence and listen for God to hear again what is declared in the waters of our baptisms. You are my child, claimed and beloved with you. I am so pleased. In the silence of prayer, we get to hear God tell us what God thinks of us. And I love the way Isaiah in the passage Roger already read us summarizes this. So hear God speak to you through this very word. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you will not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. You are precious in my sight and honored and loved. Do not fear, for I am with you, you whom I formed and made. In the joys and the challenges and the decisions ahead, may this word sustain you. Amen.
Good morning. I'm Paul Locke, and I'm speaking as president of the Board of Directors of Grace Foundation. Dave, I guess it's uh, President's Day today. Uh, but for the foundation, I'm, I'm here to make a confession. And the confession is that we haven't done a good enough job of keeping you, the members of Grace Lutheran Foundation, up to date and, and current as to what the foundation <clears throat> is doing and has been doing. Um, I know there are many here. In fact, you know, it's always good on a cold day to move around. So how many uh, current members of the board of directors are here today? Raise your hand. And how many folks have been at one point or another on the board of directors? Raise your hand. And as you can see, we have many, many people, and thank you all for the service you provided. But even when you're on, or been on the board of directors, and I've been on the board of directors, I've been off at other times, and it's funny, we get this kind of dichotomy when, when you're on the board of directors, you know what the foundation's doing. When I've been off, it's like, oh yeah, that foundation thing, that's whatever they're doing. And it's, it has to be even harder for, for folks that haven't been Part of the uh, part of the board of directors and more intricately involved. So what what we've decided to do, and with the permission of Pastor Phil, is on every second Sunday going forward uh, to have a short informational, if you will, short five-minute talk to kind of uh, you know bring uh, you folks up to date as to all the great things that are being done by your foundation. So today I guess I'm kind of the warm-up act for that. And the first thing I'd like to do is direct your attention to, in the bulletin we have this little blurb, and it says, did you know? And that's what we're hoping to do you know, in the future uh, weeks is to help you know more. But the first thing I'd point out is we've got the uh, you know, nice color thing, and it says Grace Lutheran Communities. And then we start the text, Grace Lutheran Church, established Grace Lutheran Foundation, Inc. And, and there can be some confusion to begin with. Well, we got this Grace Lutheran Communities, and we got Grace Lutheran Foundation, and you know what, what's going on here? First thing to keep in mind, Grace Lutheran Foundation, Inc. equals, it's the same thing as Grace Lutheran Communities. Grace Lutheran Communities is just the brand name that all the facilities, all the activities that are, are being done by uh, Grace Lutheran Foundation uh, go by. So Grace Lutheran Communities is the same thing as Grace Lutheran Foundation. But a brief history, and it's, it's set forth here, but uh, in 1959, uh, Grace Lutheran Church received a uh, bequest from the estate of M.B. and Myrtle Severson in the sum of $360,000, which in today's dollars would be roughly in the neighborhood of $3 million. So certainly a you know, sizable chunk of money. It was decided by leadership at that time that that money ought to be put aside and spent for something special. You know, maybe some of you got money from grandma and grandpa or something for a gift and they said, now you do something special with this money. And I think that's what was done uh, at the time. So in 1960, uh, a separate nonprofit corporation, Grace Lutheran Foundation Incorporation, uh, Incorporated, was, was formed, and the uh, foundation uh, was to be run by, directed by a board of directors comprised of members of Grace Lutheran Church. The money was put into that foundation, the idea being, you know, we will keep this separate, we're going to do something special with it. So we have two separate legal entities, and this can get a little cloudy at times, but we have Grace Lutheran Church, a separate nonprofit corporation. We have Grace Lutheran Foundation, Inc., another separate legal entity. The connective tissue between the two is that the members of both are you. The members of Grace Lutheran Church are the members of Grace Lutheran Foundation, Inc., and that's the connections, the members of the foundation that nominate and elect the members of the board of directors who run the corporation. The members of the foundation have say in passing some of the bylaws 
And if we ever have to change the <clears throat> Articles of Incorporation, the founding document, uh, members uh, are part of that. So all of us as members of Grace Lutheran Church are connected to Grace Lutheran Foundation. We are the members. Uh, you know, you could liken it to uh, we're the shareholders of, of stock in a corporation. So it's very important. So we as a board think, you know, we want to make sure we're all connected, we know what's going on. Because briefly over the years, uh, well, to, to back up for a second, at the time the corporation, the foundation was formed, the mission was, as it states in here, is it is to be a complementary arm of Grace Lutheran Church to respond to the spiritual, physical, and social needs of people in order to enhance human dignity and growth by providing high quality Christian based services. And for many, many, many years, this is what has been done on behalf of the foundation through Grace Lutheran Communities. The first special thing that was done was to build and open the MB Severson home over on across the river on Porter Avenue, which at the time was by far the first real major. Uh, at that time, we called a nursing home in the Eau Claire area. Subsequently, the Grace Barstow apartments for low-income sub subsidized housing were built. Uh, that was followed by <clears throat> Grace Edgewood, an assisted care facility. Grace Willowbrook, another assisted care facility. Woodlands, uh, an assisted care facility for uh, <clears throat> persons with memory loss. We have provided adult daycare services as well as before and after school uh, services for children aged 5 to 12. So a number of wonderful things have been done over the years and we look forward to doing on again the second Sunday of each month coming forward is to you know, give a brief presentation to you know keep you apprised of what is actually going on with your foundation. So thank you for your time and I'll turn it back over to Pastor Phil. Oh, another one. <laughs> We're doubling up today. The Spirit of the Lord has poured out upon us in abundance so that we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. For dimensions of nature where we experience you, rivers, deserts, wide open skies. God of grace, hear our prayer. For those who find themselves expecting your great transformation and wondering about your presence in the world, God of grace, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. For those who have been baptized that we might live as your beloved children, God of grace, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those contemplating baptism, that they might sense the depth of the gift you offer in those waters. God of grace, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. For those waiting for your transformation in very concrete ways. For the sick, the grieving, those without enough resources, those lacking shelter in cold weather, bring them healing. God of grace, Hear our prayer. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O oh God, we lift those and all of our prayers to you in confidence and faith through Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be, be thy, thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 304.
Thank you for being part of our Together in God worship service. Your prayers and financial support are always deeply appreciated. Go in peace. Serve the Lord.